Good evening and welcome to ECISD Live. My name is Scott Murray and I'm the superintendent of Ector County Independent School District. And it is a pleasure to have each of you joining us tonight. We've got some really special guests uh, that we'll have an opportunity to meet in just a few minutes. Some of the best educators we have in, uh, in Ector County. Uh, but before we get to them, got a few district updates that I would like to give to each of you. First of all, we had a school board meeting this week on Tuesday night and our board of trustees made some really exciting decisions. Uh, in fact, three of the items affect the taxpayers in Ector County. Those of you that are watching tonight that live within Ector County will receive significant benefit because of this. Uh, the first two decisions they make were related to bonds that we have held in, in the last several years. And uh, so their decisions will actually save all of us as taxpayers, almost $17 million. We're doing some things with those bonds and taking advantage of the current economic situation uh, to pay off some of those bonds a little early and also to make sure to refinance some of those bonds. But the total savings to taxpayers will be almost $17 million. So really good news uh, for um, for Ector County. And I applaud our school board members for their stewardship of, of the public funds uh, that you entrust us with as taxpayers. The second thing uh, that the Board of Trustees decided also on Tuesday night was about the tax rate. Our trustees this year voted to keep the tax rate exactly uh, the same. And so there will be no tax rate increase this year. It will remain the same. And again, I applaud the stewardship of our school board members for, again, looking after the dollars that we receive from our taxpayers to invest really wisely in, in the kids uh, and staff members that we have in ECISD. So good news for, for taxpayers and residents of, of Ector County. Um, I also would like to lift up our students and staff members tonight. We um, have been doing an amazing job keeping ourselves and those around us very safe. Uh, as all of you know, we require masks to be worn by our students from fourth grade uh, through 12th grade. Uh, we strongly recommend it for our pre-K kids through third grade students. And our kids are doing an absolutely incredible job. In fact, the other day I saw a group of middle schoolers outside and their, their teachers gave them a chance to take a mask break outside and socially distance, but not a single kid would take off his or her mask because they had become a part of their identity. And, uh, but I applaud our kids at, at all levels for doing such a really good job and our staff members as well. You know, we've asked our teachers and those that are directly uh, involved with students to add an additional layer of protection. Not only are the staff members required to wear masks, but we also have to wear a face shield anytime that we are around children. And, and that is an additional burden on the part of our staff members. So I thank them for uh, for, for adding that additional layer. But the good news there is that because our staff members are doing that, we have been able to keep uh, any spread of COVID-19 on our campuses uh, really almost non-existent. The cases that we are seeing in ECISD are cases that come from the outside. Uh, they get it from a family member or a friend or at another experience and they bring it into the schools. Um, so we've been very fortunate uh, that in ECISD, our cases have come from the outside into the schools, uh, but just really pleased with the behavior of our kids and uh, and our staff members and, and just the response that they have all given to ensuring the safety of not only themselves, but the safety and protection of those around them. So really good work on the part of, of, of everybody that's a part of ECISD. Um, and another announcement, parents of, of secondary kids, our middle school and high school parents, you're probably aware that the grading period for middle school and high schoolers ends tomorrow. So the first six weeks is over. Um, and we've noticed a few things in the first six weeks uh, for our middle school and high school kids. In fact, some of this we're also noticing with elementary students, although their grading period doesn't end for, for three more weeks, but something for all of us to be aware. One of the things in particular with our virtual kids is some of our virtual students are struggling to turn in uh, their assignments uh, to their teachers. And some of you watching tonight as parents, you may have already received a phone call or two uh, from your child's teacher, letting you know that your child is missing some assignments, and and some kids have have not submitted those, and and it's, it's reflected on their report cards. So, parents, next week, if you again middle school, high school, you have a chance to see those. Either you can log into the parent portal and get an early view um, of that that 
report card early next week, or uh, we will also send those home, those printed versions, I think next Friday, one week from tomorrow, uh, those will be going home. So parents, again, of middle school and high schoolers, make sure you pay attention uh, to that. You can, you can anticipate that. And if indeed you see something on there that is of concern, I encourage you to have a, a good and healthy conversation with your, with your child, uh, just to f- un- better understand what the problems may be and then how, uh, if we can partner with you in supporting our kids, uh, how we can do that. And speaking of supporting our kids, as I mentioned at the start of the show, we have an amazing group of educators that are joining us tonight. They represent all three levels, elementary, uh, middle school, and high school uh, teachers, as well as an administrator that is with us tonight. So we're going to start with our at the elementary level, and we have Kristen DeShazo from San Jacinto Elementary School joining us, kind of representing all of our elementary teachers tonight. So Ms. DeShazo, Thank you for being here tonight. And uh, tell us a little bit about what uh, kind of where you teach. I said San Jacinto, but what specifically you teach and then what your experience has been like so far this year. Well, good evening, everyone. My name is Kristen DeShazo and I do teach um, second grade at San Jacinto Elementary School. And my experience this year has been very positive. I know that it's a very challenging time for many teachers, parents and students alike. However, my experience has been very positive and each day I'm overcoming challenges that come my way. So it's been a very positive experience. Good for you. We'll talk about that a little bit more. Thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, let's move on to the middle school level. So we'll we'll promote ourselves to middle school from Nimitz uh, Middle School tonight. We have Angela Hodge and Angela, you work with uh, a special group of kids at Nimitz Middle School. You work in our AVID program. Uh, first, thank you for joining us tonight, Ms. Hodge, and tell us a little bit about your experiences uh, so far this year at Nimitz. Well, good evening, and thank you for having me. Um, like you said, my name is Angela Hodge, and I am the AVID coordinator at Nimitz Middle School. Um, this year has been very different, very yeah. difficult for a lot of our, our students and parents and teachers, yeah. but my personal experience, it has been positive. Um, I was excited to get started and that's just how I started off. Um, I wasn't dreading it. I was excited and I'm, I'm still excited. And the, yeah. the students, when I have 85 to 95% of the students logging in every day. Oh, wow. Good. That's something. Yes. It's kind of nice to see those kids um, again. Yes, it is. It is. I know we missed them. I was I remember on my first, uh, the first day of school, I uh, was at one of our high schools and the teachers were walking down the hall and that was the comment. It is so nice to see kids uh, back in our facilities again, or even virtually. It's just nice to see their face. Um, so again, yeah. thank you, Ms. Hodge, for joining us tonight. It's a pleasure. Moving on to high school from New Technology High School tonight. Um, Lorna Lynn De Leon is joining us, and uh, she is, again, a teacher at New Tech Odessa. So, Ms. De Leon, thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, tell us specifically, what do you teach at New Tech, and what has your experience been like as we started this school year? Uh, good evening, sir. Um, and good evening, everybody. I am Mrs. Lorna Lynn De Leon. I am the biology teacher at the Tech Odessa. Um, my experience, um, we are uh, both hybrid and uh, virtual. So we're doing the same thing uh, with both of the kids. Um, it is very challenging, but like what you have mentioned a while ago, sir, um, tomorrow is the end of the six weeks, the first six weeks. So we are celebrating. I'm very optimistic. We're celebrating small victories. We already have the first six weeks down. Uh, it's challenging, but with the support of uh, my family and my new tech family um, communication, and everything it has been um, so far. Uh, it is leading us to be very optimistic for the year. Good, good. You mentioned cheerleaders. It's kind of nice to have people, you know, not only our personal families, but our school families encouraging us, because I think as we've heard all three of you say so far, it this hasn't been an easy transition. Yes, sir. It, it has not been a very easy transition. I've, I've been teaching for 20 years, like this, uh, this school year will be my 20th year. This will be my second year for ECISD. I'm originally from the Philippines. And people would always say, oh, you've been teaching for so long. But with this year that is so different from every single year, um, it is a challenge. It, it is a challenge. But like what I said, sir, we are very, very optimistic that we, we can, as we work together, we can get the sunset. Good. Absolutely, we can. And we're doing it. All right. Now we have a, a principal join us tonight, Mr. Marcus Lopez. 
Uh, Marcus, I was actually at your school last week, I think. Uh, we saw some, some incredible things happening uh, on your campus at EK Downing. So tell us a little bit about what it's been like as a principal kind of transitioning in into this particular school year. Well, yeah, thank you. And, and thank you for, uh, for, for mentioning that. There is some incredible things that are happening here at Edward K. Downing. Let me introduce myself. My name is Marcos Lopez, and I am the principal here at Edward K. Downing. Um, some of the challenges. Wow. I, I, you know, I don't know what else to say after all of the, the panel has already spoken. But from a principal's point of view, I'll tell you one, one quote that keeps, keeps uh, ringing in my head and that learning has no limits. Uh, and we've learned that this year in the fact that we can learn in a variety of ways. Now, uh, the virtual uh, learning has been challenging on both sides, uh, on at, there at home and here at school. Uh, some positive things have been happening. And then there's some things that we just kind of had to work through, some communication skills and, and, uh, and, and technology and and. Does the technology work? Uh, those kinds of things. But, uh, you know, for the most part, it, you know, parents are willing to work with us and, and, and always giving us that grace, which I want to thank you, parents, for doing that, because that's very important. Um, and, and we eventually get we could definitely get the job done. So I uh, appreciate the, the partnership that we have with them. And it, it's been it's been great, positive. Uh, there's still some challenges. We still got a lot of hoops to jump through, which I'm sure we'll talk about tonight. So yep. glad to be here. Yep, good. Thanks for joining us, Mr. Lopez. Let's go back to elementary. Um, our focus tonight is is really on uh, our, on our parents, but how our parents can can support um, our kids. So sp let's dive into um, our elementary students for just a minute, um, Ms. De 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 Shezo, What if we think about our elementary kids or our our parents? supporting their children, what, what are some words of wisdom uh, that you might share with moms and dads tonight as we think, as they think about how to create an effective environment for their child at home in this virtual learning world? Yes, sir. Well, I think one of the most important things that parents can do for their children at home is to create a schedule that creates routines for their students to be on track each day. So when we're face to face on campus at the school, we have schedules where students know exactly what's going to happen from this time to this time. Uh -huh. And I think it's very important that parents try to create a schedule that students can stick to. It helps them build skills that they desperately need as they get older and into junior high and high school. So that would be one of the most important things I think that parents could do at home to really help their students become successful in a virtual environment. Have you seen that work with some of your students already? I think so. We do have some parents who get their children logged in on time and they are starting to keep that routine. You know, as educators, we have provided schedules for what we think online learning should look like at home. Now, what I've told my parents is it's very important for you to take our schedule, but make it work for your family. So I heard you schedule and routine. Would you, are those kind of interchangeable or do you, are both critically important at the elementary level? What are you seeing? I think they're both very important. Um, I know that routines are important, but sometimes scheduling can be a little bit more of a priority. Because yeah. when teachers are logging in, when we're providing those live lessons, it's really important that their students are actually enter, uh, you know, entering those live lessons because yeah. they have an opportunity to communicate with us while they are live with us. Whereas if we post a video for them to watch, it's a little bit more difficult for them to communicate with a two-way communication. Okay. That Good. scheduling is important for them to stay on top of. Absolutely. No, it makes a lot of sense. What about the middle school, Ms. Hodge, as you think about your middle school students and what you're seeing at Nimitz, um, what 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 would you add to uh, anything that Ms. Deshejo said from an elementary level? I would probably add organization, mm. which does include this schedule and routines. Yes. Uh, definitely organizing time, organizing their materials, and mm -hmm. organizing their learning. So, you know, organizing time would would include routines. Um, 
and, and their schedules, organizing their materials so they know exactly where, you know, maybe using e-binders or e-planners okay. and organizing their materials where they know exactly what time this class starts, the materials I need for each class. Okay. Uh -huh. And then um, being just being and being prepared, being prepared for class. Anything that, that at the middle school level, you know, sometimes middle school kids don't necessarily want their parent involved. You know, I can do this on my own. Any words of wisdom to that middle school parent that to help them navigate the some kind of distance that middle school kids sometimes create? Yes, sir. Most definitely that and so that's great when the middle schoolers feel that way because then the parent is allowing them to have more responsibility uh -huh. so what the parent would need to do is set up expectations okay when i go to work i expect you to log into your virtual classes on time yep. and to follow the virtual expectations you know being out of bed being dressed uh being appropriate at all times so yep. Because I go to my job, I expect you to do your job and the parent can monitor from a distance. They can yep. um, as long as they may be on parent portal yep. um, because I have a high school daughter and I check parent portal. Okay. So I'm not over her shoulder every day. But when I see parent portal and I'm like, OK, I screenshot it and I send her a text message. Okay. She gets the point. Good. No, that's a great, great tool. Parent portal, portal is a great tool for parents. Yes. That was a design. And that is one way. I, and I like your comment about you're not looking over their shoulder, you know, mm -hmm. but yet you are <laughs> involved in their life. Yes. You, you as the parent, you know, that's your opportunity. Good for you. All right. Let's move on to high school. Uh, Ms. DeLeon, as you think about uh, the students that you're serving um, and again, guidance for parents, how can a parent um, support their kids at the high school environment? Yes, sir. Uh, I do have like a couple of things. Uh, first, sir, because we're high school. I, I would it will be the best scenario if the, the high school students would have like a designated place in their in their home for study because you know the higher they go the, the lessons are more specific so they really need the space for them to be able to focus mm -hmm. aside from what they were talking about a while ago about the routines yep. and then for, um, communication communication for in the tech Odessa, we do have our echo as our platform so we we always post our agendas. Uh, everything will be on there. We um, encourage our parents to be able to be um, an observer for their children. So like what um, the AVID coordinator at NIMIS said, they're not like looking at uh, over their shoulder, but they have the ability to be able to monitor like what are the assignments, when are they due. Sure. And also um, we, we will encourage the parents to be able to know the teacher's um, email address, our conference period. So that open communication would be um, easy access for both of us, uh, the parents, the students, and for the teachers. And also start to encourage the parents to encourage their children about independence because we're talking about high school, yes. for them to be able to uh, plan. So this is the assignment for this week. This is the project due for this week. So they will be able to maximize their time uh, mm -hmm. on their study skills so that um, they would not be like um, cramming or uh, yep. like at a loss for for homeworks and projects. So talk about that for just a minute, Ms. De Leon. When you um, think about the, the workload of a high school student, you know, how, how do they keep from being overwhelmed with all of the work? Um, sir, for, for our school, we do have, at the, at the start of the year, we do give our syllabus. So the students and the parents will be able to know, so this, uh, this is the track for this um, semester. And then for us, for ECHO, we post our agendas every single week. And also for our ECHO, we do have the calendar that the kids and the parents will be able to see, oh, this would be the, the lesson for this week. So we do have virtual labs this week. We do have like a um, a, re a small research that is due for this week. We do have a lesson for this week. So uh, being able just to be um, on top of whatever uh, that will be given for the week or for the, the next two weeks, sir, that, that would be uh, very helpful for the students. So looking ahead, so, so in your in your school, they can look at that syllabus and they see what's coming. So it yes. sounds like organizing their time, they're able to, yes. to organize and manage their time. And some days may be busier than other days because yes. of projects or things. Okay. 
All right, good. Oh, good advice. Uh, Mr. Lopez, from, from your perspective as an administrator, you've probably spoken with lots of uh, parents and teachers already in the first six weeks. Um, what, what, what words of wisdom, what are you hearing? And then what words of wisdom might you share with moms and dads tonight that are supporting their kids? Sure. Um, well, some of the things that I hear, you know, many times parents will call and, and, uh, some, some of them are, are levels of, of, of frustration. Uh, maybe they don't understand the platform that we're using. Uh, they're having difficulty with internet connection. Um, or, or maybe they're having a difficult time, you know, maybe maybe reaching out to the teacher. Um, um, some of them uh, have yet to, 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 to have that conversation with the teacher. And so one of the things that I do want to encourage parents tonight is to make sure that you are communicating uh, with the teacher. Every school has got, uh, you know, uh, some level of texting form. Like for our campus, it's Class Dojo. Um, every teacher has an email address. I know that if you, if your child is being, is using, uh, Google meets, then, um, they can, uh, chat in the box. The teachers have no problem uh, in uh, giving you their classroom phone number and you can talk to them. Uh, that's one of the, there's where we can solve a lot of the challenges right there is being able to, to build that relationship with the teacher yep. so that, you know, and the teacher knows what frustrations you're going through. And many of the times we can fix. If we can't fix it, then guess what? We call somebody to fix it. And, sure. uh, and, and it gets around to that. Now, there, there are some great successes that are going on. And I think the, the level of success comes from uh, just the communication. The, the, the advice that I want to give our, our parents is, um, is there a space? somewhere in, in the household or wherever the child is learning from, do they have a learning space? Um, you know, is it, cause I've, I've been in certain uh, virtuals and we might see, uh, you know, children in the kitchen and then there's distractions in the background, you know, kind yeah. of thing. So yeah. Take into consideration what's, what's happening in the background or is there, is, uh, is the dog barking in the background or, um, is the TV on too loud or things of that sort? So try to minimize the distractions uh, and, and give your child a, a, a small learning space to where they can just focus on the learning for the amount of time that they're online. You know, that's interesting. I, you know, part of those distractions, not only is it a distraction for your own child, but sometimes in a virtual environment, it's a distraction for everyone, you know, that is yeah. that is involved in that virtual class. That, that's a great piece of wisdom. Um, because in a virtual environment, your you your environment is everyone else's environment. Uh, really different. Good. Thanks, Mr. Lopez. Uh, let's go back to let's go back to elementary school, uh, Mr. Jose. I'm having a hard time with Deshazo. I'll have to slow down. There we go, Deshazo, um, and say it. I talk too fast. That's what you get from being Rhode Island. Um, let. At, you know, as you work with second graders and you think about balancing the workload for an elementary child, uh, you talked a little bit about, you know, the importance of routine and schedule earlier. But talk about balancing the workload. And, and if a child has too much or too little work or they're not turning in work, what what guidance might you give to a parent if the child is struggling with the workload? Not enough or too much? So if we have a student who's struggling to complete the workload. First and foremost, parents, please feel free to reach out to us. That's what we're here for. Reach out to us. Hey, say, hey, my student is really having a hard time completing this, this work. Is there anything that we can do to help with that? And we're here for support. We're ready and willing to help parents to help figure out how to make that workload work for you and your family and your child. It's very important that that communication is occurring because sometimes there is a disconnect because we're teaching through a computer screen. Yeah. And especially with little kids like second and first graders, they sometimes can't really communicate to us that they're having a hard time completing all the work. So parents, it's really important for you to reach out to us and let us know, you know, Mr. Shazo, my child's having a hard time to, you know, completing the work. Let us know and we're willing to work with you and your child. So when I'm doing online learning, we have time set aside in our schedule and I call it 
um, RTI, response to intervention. So if your child's having a really hard time, they can join that live meeting and we can work in a very small group setting to help your child get caught up or figure out how to fix their problems that they're having so they're not stressed out with the work. Yep. And now on the other part of that is we may have students who need extension, who are like, man, this is not enough for me. I need more. So reach out to us. If you're like, man, my student can complete this work so quick. Let us know. Trust me. We always have something up our sleeves that we can help and give your student to extend their, extend their minds and really get them engaged in something else that might be a little bit more challenging for them. Yeah, that's they- good. You know, it, I, I like what you said. More work doesn't necessarily mean we're going to go from 10 math problems to 100 math problems. That's right. It, 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 it is more right. rigor. Yeah, it, it, our opportunity is to make sure that every child has the right amount of rigor. And I, I heard you you speak to that as a second grade teacher. And and uh, so uh, great, great wisdom. And parents, certainly, if, you're chi- if you do not feel your child is being challenged, then, you know, take take the guidance of a smart second grade teacher. And that is, you know, have a conversation with the teacher so that we can ramp up the level of rigor. It's not about necessarily more time doing math problems. Mm-hmm. It's the the level um, and intensity of that work that's important. So good wisdom. Miss um, Hodge, let's stay with this same topic as we think about a middle school student kind of balancing uh, too much work, too little work, um, what does that look like? You know, my child is really struggling. What 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 guidance would you give to a parent whose kids are struggling right now? Well, um, like Ms. DeShazo said, um, I agree. Reach out to the teachers. Um, I had a great conversation with one of my parents today about her child that, you know, her young, young son is struggling. And I... I mean, we had a great conversation and there are things that that I can do to help him and things that she can do to help him. And how I mean, she told me literally that she she has has spoken to each of his teachers. And Uh so that's what it takes. And I know that sometimes a teacher is not available um, at the moment you need them. And so the experience that some parents have had, well, they will reach out to another teacher because maybe I can call the math teacher for you. Yep. Hey, can you call this parent back um, real quick? Can you maybe make that call today or send them an email? And so that way, I mean, I, I can reach them quicker because we're, you know, we're right there together. Yep. But um, so reach out to maybe more than one teacher. It, it, you know, but communication is the key. Well, and I also heard you, you kind of describe partnership, you know, in the conversation today that you had with that parent, I heard you say, you know, you, you could do some things and the parent could do some things, but it it takes that team, you know, teachers do not do this by themselves. Parents cannot do them, do this by themselves. We we need each other to ensure that our kids are successful. So most definitely because what works maybe for one student doesn't work for the others. So we, we have to, um, um gear the learning toward each individual student so that they can get the the best experience learning experience possible yep because i don't learn the same way that other teachers may learn no and, correct and so this i mean we're all in this together and yep. yeah and it's just going to be very important for us to work together no absolutely Ms. DeLeon, let's talk about high school kids for just a minute. And, you know, this has been a transition for um, all students. It really, the, the whole world has been transitioning. But h- how are your kids in a virtual world doing? How are they feeling? What are they thinking about? Uh, you know, what is their mood right now from your perspective as their teacher? Um, so for, for my freshman biology, so coming in from like that five months of like staying at home and then now going back to their synchronous and asynchronous days, they're excited. They are excited to be back. They are excited to connect. They are excited to do like what we have been doing virtual labs. We have been doing um, small activities with them. They, they wanted that connection and slowly and uh, optimistically, we are trying our best to be able to provide that. Like what we were talking about a while ago, 
um, some of the kids want more. They want more um, rigor for, yeah. for them to be able to learn. Because I do have some kids that are um, on my dual credit classes. They 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 are they're wanting that knowledge every yeah. single day. Mm -hmm. Now, why what, the, the kids want to learn? Yes, yeah, that's sir. interesting. Um, and sometimes they don't know they want to learn. So we have to help them get there. But but I think our, our kids in general, you know, elementary, middle, and high school, they have that desire. And, and that, that is one of the things that a great teacher does is, you know, you help that child uncover, you yeah. know, and, and experience that desire to learn. Um, that's good. What, let's stay at the high school level, Ms. DeLeon. If, if, if one of your students is struggling um, uh, emotionally or they're dealing with issues, what guidance would you give to parents? Maybe they notice some things about their kids that are unusual. What, what should a parent do? Um, for, for, our, uh, Maybe, sir, um, just reach out, reach out to um, us, the teachers, and also in our school, we do have our counselors for them to be able to um, ask um, some of the help. I know we offer, we offer some um, counseling for free for our, uh, for our kids. So having that step, that knowing that their kids are struggling, knowing that their kids need the help, that first, the first thing that sir, is a big step for them to be able to acknowledge it. And then for them to be able to ask for help. And we are always um, here ready to help. They would just have to reach out to us. And our counselors would have um, certain um, things for them to be able to do, or they would um, refer them to somebody else that will be able to help them um, if they are struggling um, emotionally uh, with, with all of this that is happening. Yeah, good. Mr. Lopez. As you let's stay with that struggling student for a minute. You know, you're you're an elementary principal and you serve hundreds of kids and families. And I'm sure you've had some phone calls from parents that kids are struggling, whether academically or socially or emotionally. What what guidance do you give to parents that are that are in which their kids are having some issues? Well, first and foremost, um, you gotta contact the school. Um, you know, we're not gonna know because we're having to do this virtually. Uh, so we don't know what's going on at home. Uh, when the screen goes off, I, I, I don't know if, if the child is struggling until the child has turned in the work and then we can see from there. And it, so one, one, one thing is communicate to the school that, hey, my child is struggling academically um, or maybe it's social and emotionally. And so have the conversation with the teacher um, just like, uh, someone mentioned, one of the panelists mentioned earlier, is that we have counselors on campus and even at the elementary level, we have a counselor who is available to reach out and see what is going on. We, even though the parent has chosen to, to have their child learn virtually, that doesn't mean that we can't help here at school. We can still offer the assistance that we need. So one, the first and foremost thing is we got to hear from from parents. Uh, I'd love to say that we're mind readers, but we're not. Uh, and uh, so reach out to us. We're more we're here to help. That is what we are designed to do. Yeah, no, that's, that's great. In fact, I don't know if all four of you caught this, but but all four of you have said exactly the same thing when it comes to any parent or child that is struggling, whether it's academically, socially, or emotionally, but all of you, your answer was call us, you know, contact us. Um, and look at the head that, that, yes, that is, that is what we want. And Mr. Lopez, I think you, you summed it up. We are here to help. Um, we, we do not want, we have, we serve 34,000 children in ECISD and our goal for each of those children is for them to be incredibly successful in life. And in order to be successful in life, we need them to be successful now. And, uh, and so our energy, 100% of our energy is ensuring the success of each and every child that we serve. And, you know, parents, you've heard it tonight. You know, every panelist that we have tonight is about let us know, call us, contact us. And we are here to help and support you uh, to ensure that your child is successful. And I, I can tell you just, you know, I've been here a little bit more over a year. And, you know, this district is full of uh, adults, 4,200 of them, in fact, 
Um, and uh, there are bus drivers and secretaries and counselors and nurses and teachers and administrators and all kinds of folks. And, and our, our goal is, is for every kid. We all want to help and we'll do whatever it takes to ensure the success of our kids. Um, let's go back to uh, our elementary school and Ms. DeShazo, as we think about the how, I'm a parent and I need help. H how do I contact you? Uh, what, give me some specific ways. I don't even know how to reach you. What, what does that look like? How do I contact a teacher or the school or a counselor? Well, the first thing you can do is Google the school that your child attends and call the office. They have the number posted right there on the internet. You can call that way. You can even search a teacher's name. So like my name, Kristen DeShazo, all you have to do is put a dot between our first and last name and tag on extracountyisd.org and you can email me. Um, also, I provide all my students with a Seesaw um, um, application that they just um, can contact me through there. You can also reach out to me through the website. So if you go to extracountyisd.org and you click on our schools and you scroll down to your child's school, you can click on that website and you'll um, be able to find the staff link. You click on there and you can find any teacher. And we have websites set up and all of our contact information is there. Yep. But honestly, the easiest way is you just type in your teacher's first and last name with the dot right in the middle, and you can email us at ectorcounty dot or ectorcountyisd.org. It's super easy the way they have it set up. So, and our phone numbers, guys, our extensions are on our website. Please reach out to us. That's what we're here for. Good, good, good. Ms. Hodge, what about you? I heard you you even offered, hey, the teacher next door to me, I'll, I'll contact them for you. So, you know, good for you. But Ms. Hodge, um, as you think about um, people at the middle school level, parents contact you. And sometimes the kids may not want that contact, but right. how should a parent reach out to um, a teacher at Nimitz or any middle school? What does that communication look like? Okay, so yeah, the communication at, at a middle school, and uh, especially at Nimitz, uh -huh. in, you may not get in because when we're teaching, our phones are... I mean, you would probably go to voicemail. So the easiest, yep. quickest way uh, for most teachers will be an email. And we do try to respond within 24 to 48 hours. Okay. Um, uh, so we'll call you back. But just like Mr. Shazo said, we have websites set up. Um, certain teachers have a remind set up. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a Google parent classroom that I have set up. Um, I gave all of my students the class code so all the parents have to do is enter into my google classroom for parents it is for parents so that we can stay connected good good and that's great and i i like you know one of the things you said is if you call us on our phone sometimes we won't answer and the reason for that is you're in the middle of class right. as your superintendent I, i'm glad to hear you say that you're not answering the phone in the middle of class so thank you that's that's a good answer <laughs> But it's important, you know, parents, you know, you can leave a voicemail and, and let the teacher know that you have called. I know sometimes leaving voicemails isn't a popular thing to do, but, uh, but I encourage you to do that and, and the teacher can reply. But it sounds like, Ms. Hodge, email might be the best way for many of our teachers mm -hmm. so that you, you can respond to it, you know, when you have that opportunity. And 24 to 48 hours is, is a great response time. So that's good customer service. Good. Yes. Um, as we move, Ms. DeLeon, what about at the high school level? Again, sometimes parents are even more removed um, at the high school level, but how does a parent reach out to um, a high school teacher or a counselor or someone at the high school? Um, like what they were talking about first, so it is all in the school's website. So they could just search our names, our subjects, and then you will be able, they will be able to access our email. Um, for our school, it also shows our conference period so that just in case they really want to talk to us, it's like what you have been saying, if we're having a class, we can answer the phone. But if it's a conference period, we might be able to answer the phone if we are just in our classroom. And also on Echo, um, our parents have access as an observer. So they will be able to see what's going on and then they will be able to send us email through our Echo platform. Like email. <laughs> email pictures. You got it. No, that's good. It's a popular tool. Hey, Mr. Lopez. Uh, you know, one of the questions that we've seen several questions tonight about 
the tools that we're using as a school district and even the teachers, as we've heard them tonight, they've used some vocabulary that some of our parents may not know or understand. Um, echo, uh, well, I know what an echo is, but Mr. Leon used that word. Um, so Mr. Lopez, what are some of the tools that teachers are using at your school that parents might need to be aware of? And then how would a parent learn that tool or does the parent need to learn how to use the tool? Speak to that for just a minute, Mr. Lopez. Sure. And, and you know, I'm glad you brought that up because, you know, so many of our tools that we use virtually um, can be overwhelming. It yes. most definitely can, especially if you're if you're not tech savvy, um, they can be overwhelming. Um, so we have tools like we have Google Classroom. And so there's a Google code that goes in there. We have Seesaw and, and Seesaw has a certain code. We have Imagine Math, Imagine Learning, uh, HMH logins. We have class links. All these things, you know, to, to a parent who isn't living the uh, school life, um, this is a lot. And it becomes overwhelming. Yes. So what I'm going to tell you to do is if you can't get us by email, if you can't get us by phone, guess where we're at? We're here in the building. Come on over to the school and, and come visit with us. Um, if the teacher's in class, uh, you'll already know because you already have the, the teacher's schedule. But set up a time, a conference time. Teachers still have conference times. Yep. They're working here at school. Come visit with us. Let us show you. Let us educate you on how to access these platforms. If you're having trouble, maybe it's it's, it's simply you you have the wrong code. Maybe it's, it's, it's a button that you need to click on or... Or maybe the, the device needs to be updated. We won't know that until you come and visit with us. Let yep. us see it face to face. And so uh, we'll definitely keep our social distance. We'll have our masks on and everything. But, uh, you know, I, I don't know how to keep stressing this, but we are here to help. And so even though you're, you're learning from a virtual perspective, we're still here at school in person. Yep. And if you need us face to face, we can do that too. We are, you know, interesting that you say that I, on the very first day of school. So way back on August 12th, uh, I, the first stop that I made in the morning was at one of our elementaries. And as I was walking in, there was a, a mom and her daughter at the front door of the school. The school had already started and they were waiting for someone to let them into the school. And the reason they were there is because the brand new Chromebook that they had picked up, uh, they couldn't turn it on. And so they came to the school, to your point, to have someone sit down with them to show them, you know, how to use this new tool that they had just gotten. So I, I you know, I applaud our schools for opening their doors to to help parents either email, phone or, as you said, come and see us. You know, teachers still have conference periods and we have people available to make sure that our kids are being successful. Um, that's really good. Mr. Shazo, you talked about this thing called Seesaw. I've heard that a lot. What What is Seesaw? Seesaw is an incredible app that we're using on our campus at San Jacinto. And the app essentially works as, uh, well, there's two really big benefits to it. One, we can use it for students. Okay. And then the next benefit is for parents. So okay. it's almost acts as a text message, hmm. where, but it's through the application. And parents can reach out to me and I can reach out to them. And oftentimes, um, I will get a notification and if I have a second, I can reply back to that parent immediately so that I can fix any issues that they're having right then. So it's a very quick um, response time that I have. So I'm not having to open an email sure. to look. It's just a very quick notification that comes up on my phone and I can check it real fast and, and really support parents quickly. So it acts kind of as a text message, but it provides privacy for the parents and for the teachers. And then you, you put your students' assignments on Seesaw, right? Is that... Well, I personally use Google Classroom, okay, but okay. you can use Seesaw for okay. student assignments. And I know that a lot of um, campuses are using Seesaw to put students' um, work on. And it's just an overall great tool. It provides a lot of really nice, accessible features for lower grade levels. Good. So um, Seesaw is a lot like... Google Classroom, is that what I hear you saying? It Mr. kind of is, yes. But this right. application, it has everything involved. You can take pictures, videos, 
mm-hmm. and complete assignments very easily. And it's very um, younger, you know, for younger students, very yeah, friendly. For absolutely. Students. So elementary parents, you may hear both words. You may hear Seesaw, you may hear Google, but they're very similar tools. And I think we're really targeting Seesaw for mostly pre-K through second graders. And then our third graders and up primarily are using Google Classroom. Ms. Hodge, what about at Nimitz? What are the, I know Google Classroom is a big tool at at Nimitz. Any other tools that parents, any names they might be hearing that they need to be aware of or other tools? Well, uh, I'm pretty sure Remind, a lot of uh, teachers are using the Remind app. (coughs) Yep. That would be another one that. Do you use Remind, Ms. Hodge? Not this year. I have not. You're uh, not. It's chosen. Well, I've only used uh, Google Classroom this year. Okay. All right. In the past, I have used Remind, and it is great. Yeah. It is great. A great tool. And, and Remind is exactly what it sounds like. It is a an application that reminds our students and parents of yes. upcoming events, upcoming homework assignments, or deadlines, or due dates, etc. Yes. So it's a pretty powerful tool. Yes. Yeah. Good for parents and good for kids as well. That's good. Yeah. Uh, what about Ms. De Leon? Uh, you, you've already mentioned some interesting tools, but remind us again, those tools that moms and dads might need to be aware of at the high school level. Um, for, for us, sir, it's the Echo. Um, that's our platform. And Echo um, is your Google Classroom, correct? Yes, sir. Yeah. It's our Google Classroom. So it has all the activities that we have. It even has the deadline. It even has the to-do list. And then the, the kids and the parents will be able to see what is due this week, what is due next week, what are we supposed to do in the next coming days. So being able to access those things would be yep. really helpful for managing their time. Good. Yes. And I also do use Reminds for my classes. Oh, do you? So you're a Mind user as well. No, yes, good. Sir. No, good. Mm-hmm. All right. Those tools have come in handy. You know, in this age of technology, you know, if you just rewind one year ago, uh, we were not doing ECISD lives and, 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 and things that we're doing today. Uh, so I, I commend all of our, really all of you, um, uh, those panelists that we have tonight for taking the, the big plunge into this new virtual world and supporting um, our kids. I'm going to ask you one more question before we uh, close out the show tonight, and that is just any words of wisdom or encouragement or or final thoughts that you want to share uh, with our parents uh, tonight, Mr. Lopez. I want to start with you because you pro- you've interacted with a lot of families already this year, um, especially in this new virtual world. So as you think about uh, pieces or elements that moms and dads need to hear, words of wisdom for them, what would you share with our parents tonight? You know, moms and dads, here's what I'd love to tell you is, is keep up the good work. And, and, and that's, a, that's something that you need to tell uh, your little one at home, too. Uh, because one of the things that we keep in mind when, when our kids are here is we want to give them positive feedback. I mean, everybody loves a pat on the back. Everybody said, loves to hear, hey, Marcus, you're doing a great job. And so don't forget to tell your child that because... Uh, Whether they're doing this with your help or they're doing this solo, they need to hear you telling them they're doing a good job because this is not easy. This is this is new to everybody. This is new to principals. It's new to teachers. It's new to students. And so ECISD right now is kind of leading the way of what it could look like. But we still have to, your, our kids, our kids need to hear you're doing a great job, yeah. okay? Um, I, I think that's one of the biggest pieces uh, for our parents. And parents, I want to tell you, if no one's told you, you're doing a good job. I promise all those platform tools that we're using, you're not going to break them. Play around with them. Let's see what you can, how you can figure them out. If not, come to us. Come communicate with us. Yeah. We'll tell you. You're doing a great job because you are good. good. Well, you're doing a great job too, Mr. Mr. Lopez. So thank you. Good, good words. Ms. De Leon, <laughs> as you think about talking to our, our parents who are supporting their high school kids, words for them tonight. Um, we have to give each other grace. They have to give their child grace. They have to give themselves grace. And they even have to give also the teachers grace. And like what we have said, everything is new. This is a very unprecedented time. We are learning as we go. But we are optimistic. We're celebrating small victories. I hope they are also celebrating small victories at home. 
turning an assignment, turning in a project, um, doing an oral communication grade, just small things, celebrate and give yourself grace. Uh, it's a great word, grace. We all need a lot of that right now. Um, and again, especially moms and dads that are supporting their kids through this environment. So good words, Ms. DeLeon. Let's go to middle school, Ms. Hodge. Any words for our moms and dads and parents tonight? Yes. So first I would like to say thank you to all the parents um, who have supported me personally. I love you. And I just want to let all the parents know that we are here. No matter what it looks like, we're here. We're here for your student and we're here for you. We can't do this without you. We are a family, okay? We are a family and I don't try to get emotional, but we can't do this alone. Yep, correct. I live in Midland and I was so happy to see that in the neighborhood, they were, they were talking about Ector County and the work that Ector County is doing. Uh, the, the quote was something like, well, Midland should take a page out of ECISD. Look at what they're doing. The, the students over there are wearing masks and they're carrying on face to face and they're, everything is great. And so that touched me. And that also reiterated the great job that we're doing and our, our surrounding communities are watching us. No one wakes up wanting or wanting to fail. The students want to be successful. Parents, I know you want your kids to be successful. The teachers, that's why we're here. and We want them to be successful and we want you to be successful. Yep, absolutely. Let's just work together yep. and we will get through this. Absolutely. Because we're a family. And be better because of it. Good deal. Great words, Ms. Hodge. Great words. Great words. Um, Ms. Tashezo, we'll give you the final words of the night. What do you want to say to our parents? Well, parents, we all are in this together like everyone else has been saying. We don't know how long this is going to last. I hope not for very much longer. But we have to remember that young children and young people they take cues from us. Mm -hmm. They watch how we act. And we need to put forward very positive attitudes. And we need to communicate mm -hmm. calm and confidence and optimism as we're moving through this very strange time. And with that confidence and calm behavior and these positive attitudes, our students will use those cues and they will adapt. Mm -hmm. And they will start using those same behaviors. So if we just focus on the learning and look forward to a new year next year, maybe with a little less um, virtual and a little bit more face-to-face -face and we stay positive, I think that's gonna go a long way for our young kiddos and even our young adults that are moving into new um, learning situations in high school and junior high. So we've gotta show them that positive attitude and just push through and show them that we can overcome this challenge. Yep, absolutely. Good words. Good words. Thank you. Must stay positive and optimistic because we we will get through this and be better because of it. Um, so I, I want to say thank you. Thanks to the four of you uh, for joining us tonight. It, it, I, I can tell you as the superintendent, it, it is inspiring to listen to the four of you, but it gives me great confidence in the work that is happening in our schools. It gives me confidence to know that our kids have people like you in their lives, molding and shaping them into the successful adults that they will become. So thank you for investing every single day in the children of ECISD. Uh, we appreciate it. And then to you parents, uh, thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, I hope you heard um, how much the staff and faculty of ECISD cares about your children. We do this work not alone, but we do this work together. We do this work with you. And it, it is a partnership between the school district and the family that makes learning happen for children. And so on behalf of the 4,200 employees that are invested in your children, 
I say thank you for joining us tonight and thank you for allowing us to serve your most precious resource, our children. Have a good night.